Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to have you back. I was commissioned to write a piece for solo saxophone and electronics by Dr. Randall Hall for the shockingly modern saxophone festival in Rock Island, USA. And I felt very honored to be asked to do that, but there was a little problem. I've never written for solo instrument before, let alone a saxophone. So I decided to approach this in a way that would allow me to learn as much as possible about the genre of composing a solo piece for an instrument, as well as the saxophone. I would compose as I perform. Working knowledge of the saxophone came from one session right here, when I recorded with Andrew Rafudeva for my record Schwebungszimmer. He came by, showed me all the amazing extended techniques he did on the instrument. And then we hit record. I give him instructions like, we are in bad country now. And we layered and layered and layered parts upon parts. And from that I carved an arrangement that fit with the track. I took one thing away from that saxophone especially. How well it blends with early electronic instruments, or rather instruments that were meant for measuring, misused for music, such as the Rode & Schwarz UBM. The UBM has an almost acoustic quality to it, that you can hear all over works by Stockhausen, like Kontakte. So I decided early electronic instruments would be the main sound source for my electronics part. For any piece I write, it really helps me to start with the arrangement or rather the setup of the instruments that I want to use. Because as soon as I arrange them in my head and patch them together, they start to play in my head. I thought about the music for months before I even wrote anything down. I really enjoy this period of sewing, just getting ideas and letting them grow. I make a point, especially before I go to bed, to think about the composition or research things about it, because the next day my brain might present me with something I hadn't thought of. And I'm very happy that the brain works in that way, this defragmentation process that happens in sleep is like a cheat code. The one thing that pushes me to finally sit down and finish the work is the deadline. Without it, I would get nothing, nothing at all done. Electronics are my life instrument and I've spent years getting good at them as an improviser. So I'm able to perform with almost anybody directly. When I got to the setting of the composition, the place where I wanted it to live, I wanted it to feel like I was there with Dr. Hall on stage. So my electronics had to be open yet precise and powerful enough that it would feel like a show, like I was actually playing there live. So I would not overproduce anything, I would not do any fancy specialization, I would just try to make minimal and raw tones that sound good and leave space for the saxophone to shine. I set up the electronics like I would in a live set. I placed the UBM on a channel, I placed the Hewlett Packard Wave Analyzer on one, and I added this custom ring modulator that Rerun Electronics made for me. Those three instruments would be my main sound sources for the first one or two acts of the composition. 
and I started with a little click from the machine down there, the wave analyzer. And then I put the UBM to feedback and that started to sing. I put in the ring modulator at a frequency I had specified before so it would ring harmonically. Then I added more feedback, more modulation, made it a bigger drone. And then I cut it off. And that was supposed to be it, but then a noise happened, a rhythmic noise. I decided, oh, thank you, feedback system. <laughs> you have given me something that I can work with. And this became part three of the composition. And then I flicked a switch and part four happened. It was all very in the moment because these instruments and the ways that I've set them up and the way that I'm used to playing with them suddenly turned things that I had thought out became direct sound, only in this human-machine feedback loop. I only added a few dashes of Synthi AKS to that part, because I felt I needed something that would harmonize with the saxophone, where there could be like a duet situation, where you're not sure, is the saxophone playing, is it the electronics? There was supposed to be a blending moment. A good third of the electronic playback came from me playing it as I would have done on stage. <laughs> challenges I often face as an improviser in a lead role is I need to give a frame, a setting, so everybody knows in what direction we are going. But then there has to be enough freedom that each individual voice can shine. And that's how I approach the score. Rather than provide detailed notation, I give ideas, notions, directions, and then the performer can translate those with their own art. The whole piece then comes together in the interplay of the electronics and the ideas that I've written at certain points in time. And maybe we just listen to the piece now. I've got the score displayed right next to it, so you can read it while listening, if you're so inclined.
score is a frequency analysis of the electronics and there are two reasons for that. The first one is my science background. I studied musicology, so I did a lot of spectrograms. And actually I was hired by researchers to do spectrograms of music for analysis. It just comes naturally for me to use a spectrogram when looking at music. The second reason is when I researched into Stockhausen scores for my talk on speedrunning Stockhausen that I did at Superbooth, there was a YouTube channel that had spectrograms displayed live to the music that was playing. And I found that intensely helpful because it matched up beautiful with Stockhausen's score. The spectrum serves as such a nice guide to the electronics that the instructions can be rather minimal and clear. I learned a lot about the saxophone through hearing Dr. Hall play to my composition. And that's one of the biggest things that I take away from this with me. And I feel I've got more ideas in how I can make these solo and electronics compositions flow more. And that's hard to put into words because I would rather write another piece. So hit me up if you've got a commission. If you're a saxophone player and would like to play Blech Electric, please hit me up by the contact form on my website. I would love to hear more interpretations of the piece. Now, note that I didn't talk about one thing, and that's the intention behind the piece. It's an abstract piece of music, but of course, when I write it, I've got very concise ideas what it is all about. Those may be structural, or they may be semantic, they may be meanings, but I would rather not tell them because I'm way more interested what you hear when you experience the music. So please, if you've listened through, put your reaction to that in the comments. If you are my Patreon, you'll get this piece. And I've also made a Bandcamp link where you can buy it. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.